gifts and be glad in it. Welcome everyone and thank you for being with us on this special Mother's Day celebration. Mother's Day gives us opportunity to honor our mothers and tell them how much we appreciate them and appreciate their role in our lives and we are thankful for that. Mothers, I hope you were all received. We have a little gift for all of you to honor you. We have here a little book with uh, scripture verses, prayers, and words of encouragement. If you didn't get one at the entrance, please make sure to pick up one on the way out. You will find there in the welcome desk a really nice thing. We hope this will be encouraging for you. And this is one way for us to say that we are thankful for you and we praise God for you. Let me just highlight a few announcements for us before we come to the Lord in worship today. We will have prospective members class. We'll meet here in the century during the uh, Sunday school hour from 9.50 to 10.45. Uh, Kelly Missionary Baptist Church uh, uh, encourages regular attenders to become members. So we will have this class where we will talk about church membership. Why is it biblical? Why is it necessary? Why is it important? How does it benefit individual and how does it benefit a local church? So we would like to invite all of you who are regular attenders to come for this class. This will be also opportunity for you to uh, ask any questions if you have, and we'll have question and answer time. Attending the class does not obligate anyone to join the church, but this is just an opportunity for you to find out more about our church and about how to become a member. So we'd like to encourage you to come to this class after the first service we're gonna meet here on this side of the century tonight. Because today is a, a, a Mother's Day, we will not have a worship practice or Sunday evening service, so there will be no youth hang time. So there will be uh, no evening activities tonight. We will resume uh, next Sunday. This Monday and Tuesday, there will be Hope Community Kitchen from 5.30 till 8 at Storm is Norman. Everyone is invited to come. It's a great opportunity to come, enjoy a great time of fellowship, food, and have opportunity to be a blessing to our community, to meet some new people and be a blessing for them. So plan to be there this Monday and Tuesday, 5.30 till 8. Then this coming Saturday, there will be a Mary's Heart Tea Party. Women's Ministry is organizing a Mary's Heart Tea Party from 1 till 3. 1 till 3, there will be great guest speaker and there will be great time for all ladies to come and enjoy the time of fellowship. We would like to invite all ladies to come to this event. New prayer guide is provided for the church to guide your thoughts uh, uh, to spend some time in prayer, praying for our church, for leaders of the church, for church members, and for senior pastor search committee for the next 40 days. There is a prayer guide. So please use this prayer guide to guide your thoughts and prayers in this time. And then the time of the year is when we encourage people to consider how they can use their gifts and talents and abilities and serve with different church committees and different ministries that is provided here for you. So just take this uh, piece of paper, prayerfully consider how you can serve in this church, uh, circle around the areas that you're interested in, and then you can put this in the basket that is in the uh, gathering area of the church. We will be really glad to have that. All right. Is there anything else that we need to announce this morning? All right. If not, let's... Uh, just come to the Lord in prayer and ask him to prepare our hearts as we come to the time of worship. Heavenly Father, on this uh, special Mother's Day celebration, we come to you with thankful hearts, Father, and we thank you that you have given to women the capacity of participating with you in the creation of new life. And Lord, we pray that you will grant to every woman the full understanding of that blessing. Father, we praise you for that. And Lord, this morning we ask for your blessings on all those to whom you have entrusted motherhood. Father, we pray for them and we pray that the Holy Spirit will constantly encourage them and strengthen them, Father. And we pray that they will follow the examples of godly mothers of whom we read in the Bible. And Lord, we pray that you will bless them and encourage them. We pray that their sons and daughters will honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. And Lord, we pray also for all mothers who are pregnant right now. We pray that you will watch over them. We pray that you will strengthen uh, her faith in, in your loving care and in your 
uh, love and care and compassion for her and for her unborn child. Lord, and be with all the mothers who are pregnant right now. We pray, Lord, that during this time of pregnancy, you will be with them and that you will give them courage in times of fear and pain, that you will give them understanding in times of uncertainty and doubts, and that you will give them hope in times of trouble, and that you will give them special blessing and an assurance of your loving care. Father, we also pray for all the mothers who have given birth recently, Lord, we pray that you will fill their hearts with joy and that you will give them strength. And then, Lord, this morning we also come to you and we pray for all mothers who sorrow for children that have died, are sick or ill or estranged from their families or who are in trouble of or danger of any kind. Lord, we pray that you will help grieving mothers to rely and to depend on your mercy and grace and that they will receive comfort from you, Lord. That's our prayer. And Lord, we also bless this morning all spiritual mothers, all those who, though they may have no children of their own, nevertheless, they selflessly care for the children of others. And we we are thankful for their loving service and caring service, and we ask that you will bless them in a special way today. And Lord, as we come into your presence right now, we ask that you will guide us as we worship you with our songs, with study of your word, and with fellowship that we will have, Father. May your Holy Spirit lead us, so that we might worship you in spirit and truth. We pray for your glory and for our joy in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand and join us as we begin our um, worship service. You know, as kids, you look up at mom, and you know mom's got it under control. She's going to fix it, whatever's going on um, in your life and concerns that you have. And our Heavenly Father gave us those mothers. So uh, let's continue to, uh, let's lift him up this morning and worship him for uh, letting us be able to come to him like kids and know that he's got it all under control as well. I'm found in the desert. 
blessings he is in our lives. Uh, let's continue to name all of the things and many of the things that he is. Prince of Peace, Lord of Lords and King of Kings, you are holy.
national gifts and also to the Minister of Care cards and cards will be passed. Please take one card and write down any praises, anything that you would like to praise the Lord that he is working in your life. And then if you have any prayer needs or any needs, just write it down and also turn them back in the box at the end of the service and we will bring this together to the Lord and praise him together and bring all our prayer needs. He's loving God. He cares for us and he wants to lead us in this life. Let's ask for Lord's blessing on this part of service. Lord God, this morning as we come to you and, and think about it being Mother's Day and, and celebrating our mothers, Lord, it just it makes me think about creation and just how amazingly perfect you've set everything in order and how it's supposed to be. And just every time a child is born, what an amazing gift, Lord, that, that gift of birth and new life and how when Christ died on the cross, he did that for us, and he gave us new life in a, in a way that we couldn't even imagine, Lord. And we, we come this morning, and we just thank you and praise you for the gift that he gave us through that cross, Lord. And, and we ask that as we give this offering, Lord, that we would give it with a giving and thankful and submissive heart and humble heart and servant heart like our mothers do for their children each day, Lord, that we would come with that kind of heart that will give everything to you the way that a mother will give everything to their child. Lord, we praise and thank you for your love. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Please be seated. I'm going to try to make it through this without coughing or wheezing or anything. That's the time of year, isn't it? This is a song that I believe I read that Wes King wrote for his mother. Um, I find it appropriate for Mother's Day. I've done it a couple of times, but it's been a few years, so hopefully. If you've heard it before, you'll enjoy it, and if you haven't, it'll be a blessing to you. So happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. So hard to find you in your simple part, poor in spirit and pure in heart, thinking your life to be a small one, just living and trying to serve. Heaven came down for your will. The angels rejoiced at your birth. And you are the salt. You are the salt of the Not to the mighty, not to the strong, but to the lowly and those who long for mercy and peace and righteousness. They shall be called sons of God. You are the salt of the earth. Heaven came down for your word. The angels rejoiced at your birth. And you are the salt. You
Your crown awaits you in the kingdom come to lay at the feet of the Lamb. You are the salt of the earth. Heaven came down for your word. Many angels rejoiced at your birth. The service children are dismissed. Children Church, uh, Laura and Joe are here on my right and they will lead you to your classroom. So all children would like to go to Children Church, now is the time. Praise the Lord. We are thankful for our teachers, we are thankful for our children. Amen. Pastor Bobby, please come and share the word of God with us. This morning. Did you miss me last week? Well, I'm loud. Whew. Did you miss me last week? I missed you. My oldest boy was graduating from uh, University of West Florida, and so we went down for his graduation. Flew down on Friday, and he walked on Saturday and came back Sunday. But uh, I made it back for Sunday night, but I didn't uh, get back time enough to be here for Sunday morning. You're going to miss me again Wednesday because my five-year-old is graduating from preschool in Florida on Thursday. And so I'm flying down on Wednesday, my wife and I, to be there. It was her daddy that graduated. If you're going to come to daddy's graduation, you need to come to mine. Logical thinking for a five-year-old, right? So we'll be in Florida Wednesday night, take them out to dinner, go to her graduation Thursday morning at First Baptist Leesburg from preschool, get right back on a plane and be right back up here for Thursday afternoon. So uh, it's going to be a rushed week, but we'll, uh, we'll make it happen because uh, they're little ones, and all of a sudden they're grown. You know what I'm talking about. And uh, you want to enjoy the time with them while you can when, when they're small and their little steps that they take in life. Or, uh, when they're this far apart, you're here and there in Florida, it's hard to enjoy all of them, but you get to the ones you can, and so this one's significant. Uh, please sign those registers so I can keep up. I'm trying to learn names, and it helps me learn who's at 8.30 and who's at 11. I got all kinds of confused things going on with the service next Sunday. We're having a different kind of service. It won't be a sermon per se next Sunday as far as the regular preaching time. We've got a lot of songs, a lot of scripture, and a lot of prayer. Asking the Lord to bring our church together. If we're going to find the man God wants to be the pastor of this church, we need to be together, praying together, in unity together to seek the Lord in doing that. And because I didn't know who went to which service, some of you that come to 8.30, you're now going to be reading scripture or praying at 11 o'clock next week because I didn't know. And I asked some folks that were at this service and they couldn't be here next week and so I drafted another name and so if, you know, it's my fault but uh, it would help me if you would sign the register and we're going to pull them off today, ushers, at the end of the 8.30 service so I can separate who's 8.30 and who's 11. That will help me kind of get names together. We might not do that service again for a while like we're doing next week but it will help me learn who's at which service. I've chosen a title for our message today, A Mother's Legacy, and we're reading from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 7, and uh, I believe the PowerPoint, the words will be on the, the screen for you so you can follow along. I know we all have different translations, but I'll have it uh, for you today so you can follow along with the, 
the Hardcore Southern Baptist Translation or the HCSB. And uh, I'll begin reading in verse 3. All right, I think they'll get that up there in just a second. Should be the next slide, I believe, guys. There you go. I thank God whom I serve with a clear conscience as my ancestors did when I constantly remember you in my prayers night and day. I pray for a lot of you during the day. A lot of you I'm not yet praying for because I haven't learned your names, don't know all the stuff I need to know to be praying intelligently for you, but I also take the membership book that I have, which is needs to be updated. Some of your pictures are not in there, and I can look at your name and still have no clue who I'm praying for, so you know we, we need to work on that. But uh, I do like to pray for you, and uh, as Paul said, I, I try to remember you, and he says night and day. I pray at least once a day for many of you. Remembering your tears... I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy, clearly recalling your sincere faith that first lived in your grandmother Lois, then in your mother Eunice, and that I am convinced is in you also. Therefore, I remind you to keep ablaze the gift of God that is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fearfulness, but one of power, love, and sound judgment. Join me as we pray. Lord, we thank you today for all of our mothers, for our wives. We thank you for the children because without the children, it would be hard to call her mother. We thank you for ladies in our church who might have wanted to have a child and for whatever reason, God did not gift them with that child. Lord, every wife, every mother is important for the stability of the home and for helping to shape new generations of young people that will grow up to be leaders of our community, leaders of our church, leaders of our nation and of our world. Lord, I thank you today as we open your word that we find in this passage of scripture a reference to a grandmother who was godly, a mother who was godly and who passed that on to their son and grandson. Lord, may we do the same. May we pass on our faith so that those that come behind us will know how it is to walk with the Lord because they've seen it demonstrated in our lives. They've heard it from our lips. And Lord, they instill it within their own lives. Lord, speak to us now. And we'll give you praise for all you do. In Christ's name, amen. Years ago, most of you wouldn't be old enough to remember it, but there was a TV show a guy named Art Linkletter used to do about children say the darndest things. Some of you might be old enough to remember that. Well, you can go on the internet and find some really funny things that children have said I wish I could remember all the things my kids said growing up or that my grandchildren say today, but I can't. I can't remember them all, and I'm not uh, smart enough at the moment that to say it to write it down so I would have it later. So I found some stuff on the Internet and listened to some of the things that children responded to. Someone asked, why did God make mothers? A little girl answered, she's the only one who knows where to find things. Ask my wife, do you remember where I put so-and-so? I put it up so I'd remember where it was. My only remembrance is her. If you would help me remember where this was, then it would work. But sometimes even the two of us can't remember anymore. Someone asked, why did God give you your mother and not some other mom? After thinking about it a while, a little boy answered, because we're related. Okay. A group of kids were asked, why did your mom marry your dad? One little boy answered very quickly. My grandmama says she didn't have her thinking cap on. (laughs) Uh Uh-oh. I wonder where she heard that. When asked what ingredients mothers are made of, one little girl gave an answer. God makes mothers out of clouds, angel hair, and everything nice in the world, and one little dab of mean. 
Most of us have needed that little dab of mean somewhere along the line. Another question was, what kind of little girl was your mom? A young girl answered, I don't know. I was not there. But my guess would be she was pretty bossy. Sounds like some of the mothers I've run into. When asked if you could change one thing about your mom, one little boy answered, I would make her smarter. Then she would know it was my sister who messed up, not me. I think a lot of us little boys would would identify with that real quick, that we always got to blame for even when it was our sister. As we celebrate mothers this morning, we want to talk about a mother's legacy and We'll look at what this passage of Scripture says. It it talks about a sincere faith, a special gift, and a spirit of love. So let's look at what these mean. First, a sincere faith. Paul is writing this letter to the young man, Timothy, who has now become a a protege, a trainee, and later became uh, quite influential in the early New Testament church. Uh, He speaks in verse 5 about the sincere faith that he found in Timothy. And Paul adds that it started with your grandmother Lois who had a strong faith, then your mother Eunice who had a sincere faith, and I'm convinced it's in you also. I am aware that there are some good mothers in the world who do not know Christ. They, they have the natural instinct to be a good mother. They take good care of their children and they do right things by their children. I, I'm aware of that. But I want to say to you in my understanding that you will be a much better mother if you also walk with Christ. Uh, I don't know whether you've noticed it lately or not, but uh, raising children is a task. Now, I don't know a lot of you real well yet, but I've met some of you, and I I pray for your mother already because if she's had to put up with you, then, boy, she needs a lot of prayer, okay? Hey, it's tough raising children in the the world we are today, and if you're trying to do it on your own without God's help, you're going to mess up more than once, I can promise you. We need the Lord's guidance. We need His help. And sometimes... That's the only thing that gets us through is that peace and that grace and that mercy that God gives us. I believe grandchildren are a reward for not killing your kids when they got on your nerves so bad. You know, I I think, you know, we've all had that moment when, man, I'm just at my wit's end. And God gives us the grace to go further. And so we need that help from the Lord. We, we need Him working in our lives so that we can do what we need to do for our children. I saw something about as dumb as I've ever seen this morning on the internet. This person, and, and I didn't do the research on it, I'm sorry, it just the headline of it struck me funny. It was a person with uh, unusual colored hair. And she said, you need to ask permission from your children before you change their diapers. I thought that's about as stupid as anything I've ever heard in my life. The child is going to let you know I want my diaper changed right now. I mean, they'll scream and yell till you get there. So uh, do you need to stop there and say, do you really want me to change your diaper? If you do, I will. No, you just go ahead and change the diaper, please. Uh, Dad needs to be the spiritual leader in the family. I, I think that's biblical. I think Dad needs to step up for that role, but I'm aware that in many families that's not the case. I hope not in your family. I hope you are. If you're the dad, you will do the right thing and be the spiritual leader. It's in those formative years when children are little and beginning to develop their personality that the influence of the mother, her devotion to God, will help build a lasting impression on those children. Uh, My children have not always done what I wanted them to do. They have not always lived for the Lord like I wanted them to live, and and I think many of us can identify with that. But we do our best to train them, and then when they get to be adults, it's pretty much out of your hands from that point on. You can influence a little bit, but if you haven't instilled it in them when they were little, It's going to be hard to change them when they get to be adults, I assure you. 
Notice how Paul speaks about faith in the family. First in the grandmother, then in the mother, and now in the son. There are not many things that you and I as individuals get to do that we can really shape the future. You know, little kids grow up and they they want to be this person or that person and they, they want to do all these glorious things. And the reality when we get to be adults, most of us never get in a position where we can do these super humongous things. But as a mother, and I also say as a father, When we're training up our children, if we instill in them those things that help them trust Christ as their Lord and Savior and then grow up to be adults who follow Christ, we have shaped that generation. Not all kids, but our kids for the next generation. And then when we can give some influence to our grandchildren, we can help shape a second generation. Uh, I go to Haiti a lot, and I can't change all of the poverty in Haiti, but we've helped about 115 families not live in the poverty they've known all their life. Make a difference where you can. And I say that, I can't change every teenager in America, but I work to change mine. You're working to change yours. You're working to help shape the children in this church. And as we grow up this generation, they will have kids and we influence them to the best of our ability. We we change one life, one person at a time to try to make them a new generation that will follow Christ. I was interim pastor before I got hurt and uh, there were one family with three children in the church. They've since had a fourth one, but they no longer go to that church. And they were under 40, around 40. There was one other young couple in the church that were around 40, 45. Everybody else was senior adults. 23 people in Sunday school on Sunday morning. I expect one of these days for that church to go out of business. There is not another generation coming behind them to replace them. We're blessed with a lot of children in this church. We're blessed with a lot of children in Awana, blessed with children in child care. We get opportunity to influence another generation and perhaps the second generation. And some of you, if you keep hanging around, you're going to have some great grandchildren. And I hope you do. I hope you hang around to get them. You know, it takes a while. But you you get the great grandchildren. You're able to influence the third and maybe even, you know, four generations, your generation and three coming after you, four generations of influence. What an amazing thing. We can help shape the future of our family and how they will walk with the Lord. What a legacy Lois left. And Paul says, I believe you can have that kind of legacy in your family as we minister to generations that come after us. Secondly, not only did... He speak of of that, but a special gift. I believe children are a gift from God. I've heard about the gift that keeps on giving. Children are a gift that keep on taking, okay? Uh, We uh, had our whole family in Pensacola last week, and I knew one of my sons had just bought him a house, and he'd spent pretty much everything he had making a down payment on the house, my youngest boy. And so I offered to help pay his plane fare to, to come to Florida so he could fly down and, and be with us there. And so my daughter and my youngest son and my oldest son and his two children and wife, we were all there and we had a little time together on Friday night and Saturday to be family because we're scattered. One in Georgia, one in Florida, one over by Chapel Hill, between Chapel Hill and Hawaii. She's, she has a house on the big island of Hawaii but on the opposite side of the island from the volcano. Right now, it's safe, so who knows what's going to happen with that volcano keep going on over there, but uh, we enjoy the time. So even though your kids get grown, sometimes you're still giving. You know, you're still helping and doing what you can to minister to them and help them along the way. I believe the special bond between parents and their children, if you have that good relationship, 
It's a major investment, but it's well worth the investment. Paul speaks in verse 6 about the gift that God gave to Timothy. He says, develop that gift so you can use it for the Lord. The day you became a Christian, God gave you some kind of spiritual gift. Now some of you are still trying to figure out what that is. I, I understand it's not automatically that we, we know exactly what we're gifted to do. Uh, we're looking to have a lay renewal conference in the fall and October. And a part of that lay renewal conference is to help you discover and develop or begin to develop your spiritual gift. And that will be important. Whether I'm here as pastor or whoever's here as pastor won't matter. It will be important that every member that can learn what your spiritual gift is. I've done this a number of times, not through lay renewal, but in other methods of helping people discover gifts. And, and I've had people that had never taught a place in their life said, I can't. And when they went through the training, everybody in there recognized they had the gift of teaching, but the one who... Who had it? They didn't think they had it, but they did. And it was obvious to everybody else. And so they began to work on developing that gift and using it for God. Your children need to see you using the gift that you have in serving God, working in the church, making a difference in the community. It can be any kind of gift. It doesn't have to be singing in the choir. It doesn't have to be teaching Awana. It doesn't have to be praying in public. There are gifts that all of us have. Some of you are gifted at construction. Listen, I've been asked by county social services to build three wheelchair ramps, and I am busier right now than I've been in the last five years. I had not got time. But I'm going to try to find a way to do it because these families have got nobody that can help them. And so far, no church has stepped up to help them. And so they need it. They can't get in and out. And I'm going to try to take it on, and I'm going to need some of you to help me. If you've got that gift and you're willing to, hey, you don't have to have it. I'll show you what to do, and we can build them, but uh, we've we got to figure out a way to get the materials. We've got to figure out a way to get it to the site and then get the job done that needs to be done. But uh, we can learn to do these things. I became a building contractor, and I could build three-story buildings going with men on mission trips, learning how to do construction. Now, I, I went through some construction when I was in college, but uh, I didn't take contracting courses in college. I learned by watching and going with men who knew what to do. So we can teach you what to do on a job if, if you're willing to help. But, you know, we need to use the gifts that God has given us. And I think, there's a big problem in our churches today because we become so inward focused on what we want to do within this little fellowship right here and we ignore the needs that are right around us all over the area. People that are struggling and have a need and we don't step up as a church to do something about it. I believe God holds us accountable for that kind of stuff. We need to recognize and find... Uh, if you ever give your name to social services that you'll help with a need, they'll call you frequently because they can't find anybody. Can't find anybody willing to do it. Can't find anybody that can come up with money. I don't have a lot of money, but I'll use some of what I got to help somebody else that's got a need. And I know some of you would do the same. We just need to get out of our comfortable seats and get out there and do it. And so we need to take on some of these projects to minister, minister to some needs in the community. When you're faithful to the Lord, when you're faithful in church, you're teaching your children without having to say a word because they will copy in their life what they see you do. My daughter's in her 40s now, and she says, you know, every once in a while I open my mouth and my mother comes out. She never thought she'd get there. But stuff that she's heard her mother say time and time again over the years, now it's coming out of her. And where'd that come from? Well, it came from her mama. Well, our children need to see what we're doing, why we believe in serving God, why we're active in the church. The gifts that God gives you are meant to be used, and your family, of course, but also to be used in ministering to other people. I think the home that God allows you to have 
should be a, a base of operations for you to make a difference. If you were a missionary and you moved to Kenya, first off, when you get over there, you, you got to figure out the language because they don't speak quite the same as we do. You got to figure out, well, now, where do I start to make a difference in somebody's life? Well, you got to get out and meet the people. As you meet them, you kind of got your eyes open and your mind open and you're looking, what is something I can do that will help this family? And you help this family, and then you go over here and you help this family. It won't take long before word will spread, and you'll have more opportunities to help people than you know. Well, guess what? Some of you are on a mission field right here in Kenley. Do you know all your neighbors? You were a missionary, and you were going to try to make a difference. There, you start meeting your neighbors so you can... Try to share a witness with them. Help them in some way. There's a person who lives across the street from you. Now, I grew up out in the country. Across the street might be half a mile down the road. I understand that. But do you know who these people are? I don't do it every day. But a lot of days, I live on a road that's got a stop sign at each end. And if I know their name, I pray for the name of every family in every house all the way down the road on both sides of the road. I know most of them, kin to a lot of them, so I pray for them. And the ones that I don't know, I say, Lord, I don't know the name of the person that lives in this house, but would you help me get to know who they are and would you begin to work in their heart to prepare them for hearing about Jesus Christ? Our home ought to be a base of operations and we're working to reach our neighborhood, our community for Christ. Pray for them. That's the first step because God can do stuff you can't do. And so you begin to pray for them and then interact with them as you have opportunity. Plant seeds of the gospel. Every once in a while I get aggravated with the stuff I do over at Builder's Discount. Uh, yesterday it got so busy. It was absolutely crazy. We, we, we ought to give an award out on Saturday for the craziest parking day. People will come in with a 25-foot long trailer and park in a way that nobody can get in or out of the building or out of the parking lot, and they disappear while I'm busy and I can't get them to move. And it, It's crazy some days. Well, then yesterday they started making mistakes. I had a customer that came out, and he paid for 14 cabinets, but he only had 13 on the trailer. Well, first off, now i got to figure out which one did he pay for that he doesn't have. And then there were five other cars in line, all of them in a hurry to leave, and I'm stuck with this one. Got to go back over every cabinet to be sure. So I finally sent on the radio for somebody to come out here and help me. And so we could kind of do it. I get aggravated at some of that sometimes. But do you know God puts you in the mission field you are because he wants you to make a difference where you are? And just, you know, get aggravated and quit and leave it. Who would be over there to witness to any of those guys? Probably nobody. God put me there. And he wants me to try to make a difference in their life. It's not just where you work. It's your whole neighborhood. What are you doing to make a difference where you are? Let your children see that serving Christ, working to help a neighbor is important to you. You will instruct them in some things that they really need to know. I believe when you're faithful in serving God, you become a gift to your whole community. And God plants you there for a purpose. Third, a spirit of love. Paul says in verse 7, that God has not given us a spirit of fear. He says, instead we're given a spirit of power, love, and sound judgment. We all have fears at times. I'm not scared, but I am fearful. What kind of world are my grandchildren going to grow up in? I look at some of the things that we're doing in our society today and it's not getting better. It seems to be getting worse. What kind of world are they going to face? I have a feeling my grandparents felt the same way about the world I was going to grow up in. And I've survived so far. So I'm, I'm, I'm thankful and I believe God can help my grandchildren be successful and grow up and be you know safe and all that in the world that's going to be in the future, but it is quite different. I grew up knowing that 2 plus 3 equals 5. 
in today's math, you're not so sure. I grew up with certain absolutes that right was right and wrong was wrong. But in our culture today, that is not necessarily true. What's right for you may not be right for your neighbor. So they think. I mean, that's the generation that's coming behind us. Truth is relative. Just because it's true for you don't mean it's true for me. Well, yeah, it is. Now, if I have a surgeon going to cut on me, I don't want him to be somewhat relative about where he's cutting. I want him to know exactly what he's going to do and cut the exact right spot and do the right thing. Not just, well, today I wasn't feeling like cutting in that spot. I thought I'd cut over here. No, absolute. You, you do the right thing at the right time, and that should be for every generation. <coughs> we, we do not allow our fears to overcome us but we move forward with these. We pass on our faith so that future generations will help live out that faith. Paul speaks about the spirit of love. Love for your children is, is uh, difficult, as I said at times, but it's important. And Just because your child messes up, you don't quit loving them. I told you a story not long ago about a man that I helped in a church in Florida, his son was in prison and he had not seen him in 25 years. They had a falling out and he had no idea where his son was, had no connection with him, no knowledge about what was going on in his life. That ought not to be. Hey, we all have things. I, I, I've got a stepbrother that he cusses every other word. I don't hang out with him. I just can't put up with that. That's not the language I grew up with. It's not the language he grew up with, but that's what he's become. But he's still my brother. And I've been to his house. I've sat down and talked to him. And he kind of laughed at my faith and what I do, but I'm still praying for him because I believe one of these days God's going to break through that old hard, crusty head of his, and he's going to know that he needs Christ. We all have problems with somebody in our family if not one of our children it might be a brother or a sister or somebody else in our family they, they do things that are wrong once in a while but we still need to pray for them God loves us in spite of our sin and we ought to love them in spite of their sin Paul not only speaks about a spirit of love he speaks about a spirit of power you have the power to change a life in how you teach your children so that they can grow up to live for the Lord as well you might even be able to influence friends and neighbors. If you'll start thinking of your home as a mission field all around you, people need the Lord, you might make a difference in your neighborhood tremendously. Family and friends need to see and hear from you that the power in your life, how God blesses you, comes from God. Not from you, but from God. He is the one who gives you strength for each day. And Paul also speaks about a spirit of sound judgment. My suggestion is you do right all the time. Isn't that simple? Not always easy, is it? Sometimes we mess up. Have you ever apologized to your children? I've had to on a number of occasions. I promised my children we were going to do something. And then suddenly something came up in the church that I sacrificed time with my kids to go do that. And usually they will remind you, you promised me that we could do this and then you didn't do it. And I've had to say on more than one occasion, I'm sorry. Your kids need to hear you say that. How are they going to learn to say it to their kids? We all mess up. It doesn't hurt for your children to see you walk down the aisle at church and get on your knees at the altar and ask God to forgive you. How do they learn to do that? They learn by watching you. What, what is your relationship with the Lord like? Do they see that, yeah, I messed up with God this week. I, I said some things I shouldn't have said or I did something I shouldn't have done. And your children need to see that you repent. You, you change your way. Take time to pass on what you believe and why you believe it. The world is changing, but God's truth never changes. God himself is the same yesterday, today, 
and forever. He loves us. He has a plan for our lives. I hope you have found it for your life and you have followed him. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for our mothers and the legacy that many of them have left us. Lord, my mom died when I was eight years old. And so the things that she wanted to teach me, she did not live long enough to teach me many of them. But I remember, even as an infant, even as a little child, Mama getting up and singing in the choir, coming back down, she'd lay me on the front pew. and She'd go up and sing in the choir and come back and pick me up. And I've heard that story many times. Lord, I'm thankful for the example that she set. And even though she left me way too young, Lord, you gave me a stepmother that was a, a tremendous Christian woman. And she was my mother for 30 years. And Lord, I'm thankful for the influence that she had on my life. And Lord, I pray for my stepbrother who needs Christ in his life. And Lord, I pray for so many other family members and friends. Lord, may we as believers here, not just the mothers, but all of us, will we leave a legacy for our children? Will we make a difference in our community? For our extended family, Will we show them that walking with Christ is the only way to live? Lord, speak to our hearts today. May our life, our words, our love show our children and others around us the importance of following Christ. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As God speaks to your heart, you come this morning. Please rise.
dark hearts can be delivered to us. It's prayer of Christ Jesus. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your house today. We thank you for the word we heard from your book. We lift up our, our brothers as they search for uh, a senior pastor. <coughs> we pray that our search, search committee will, will seek your will in this matter. And we thank you for, for all that you've done for us. And we thank you for mothers and, the, and the, all that they've done for us. And, and what will we do with, without our, our ladies and our families? We ask these things in your precious name, Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.